there is an idea in string theory that the whole universe may be a hologram. The holographic principle su suggests that we all experience that what we all experience every day in three dimensions may really just be information on a surface located at the farthest, farthest reaches of our cosmos. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think we live in a hologram? If yes, are we just following a pre-written script? Okay. What is this holographic principle? What is that? Um, well, it's it's a, in a way, it's really hard to explain what the holographic principle is. I would have to un explain what is conformal field theory, anti-desitter, conformal field theory, duality, ADS, CFT, correspondence, all that. But let's not go into that. Let me give you a an analogical, briefer, simpler, possibly, hopefully, simpler explanation. Um, I'm, you've all heard of black holes. Uh, according to a, a black hole is a quantum object as well as an object that uh, that arises out of general relativity, right? Uh, so a block, a black hole is an object that has an event horizon, a boundary of no return. You go beyond that, you will never ever come out. So stay out of it, all right? Don't go anywhere near a black hole. Firstly, that is that. Secondly, a black hole has an event horizon, the point of no return, the boundary of no return. Inside, if you go inside the event horizon, if you cross the if you cross the forbidden threshold, then inside the black hole you have empty space. Um, that's what it is believed to be from the perspective of general relativity. You have empty space more or less. But if you go inside the black hole, you keep going towards the center of the black hole, and uh, as you reach the center, the strength, the, the force of gravity, the curvature of space-time becomes more and more extreme. And at the very center, you have what's known as this singularity. It's a monstrous thing, object, which uh, is infinite and infinitesimally small. It's a point which has infinite curvature of space-time and infinite density. So as you go towards the center of the black hole, you get stretched out in the process called spaghettification. And at the center, you get squeezed out of existence. And you become, you, you disappear. But your mass energy gets added to the mass energy of the black hole. That's what happens. Now, you as a physical human being are made of particles and molecules and bonds and all that. That is a whole lot of information, quantum information. Right? Let's even if it's just a piece of uh, it's, if it's a human being or, or or an atom or whatever goes inside, it has certain information that's encoded within it. When this atom or this human being gets sucked into the black hole and gets squeezed out of existence at the center in the singularity, the mass energy does get added to the mass energy of the black hole, but the information disappears. And that doesn't make any sense. Because throughout the universe, from all our understanding of the laws of physics and of nature, information is never destroyed. And yet, apparently, inside a black hole, information gets destroyed. That is the black hole information paradox. And Stephen Hawking said that, so that's what he said. He did a lot of work on black holes from the general relativistic perspective, from a quantum perspective also, quantum field theory perspective. The semi-classical Hawking radiation you may have heard of and so on. So Stephen Hawking uh, said that when it comes to black holes, when something goes inside a black hole, the mass energy is added to the black hole, but the information is destroyed, which makes no sense. So the string theorists started working on it. Physicists who indulge in string theory, an interesting pastime. Just kidding. So string theorists st started working on it from the 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s. In the 90s, this new principle was put forth. And it was eventually called the holographic principle. It said that any object that crosses the event horizon leaves behind its information on the event horizon. This information, which is part of the object, becomes encoded, it becomes smeared out, smeared out on the surface of the black hole, on the essentially, essentially on the event horizon. Right? So the information is not destroyed. The object gets destroyed, its mass energy gets added to the black hole, but its information remains encoded, remains encoded, stays encoded on the surface, on the exterior boundary of the black hole, which is a essentially a two-dimensional boundary. Right? So that essentially says that the boundary of a black hole is like a hologram. It's a two-dimensional surface which 
shows you something that's three uh, three dimensional inside what's a, a hologram like when you have a credit card there is a holographic image on that right as a security measure it's a flat two dimensional image but if you see it from different angles it looks like it has something three dimensional encoded inside so a hologram is a two dimensional surface that gives you information that that has information that appears to be three dimensional inside so there are true holograms and false holograms that i will not go into that so if you expand if you extend this idea the analogy of the black hole and information being encoded on the surface to the entire universe then our universe if it is finite it would have a boundary and maybe all of the information within the universe such as me what what what's in me what's in you all of this all the stars planets galaxies everything all of this information may well be encoded on the surface on the external surface that surrounds our entire universe so maybe our universe if some great alien being were to see it from outside it would appear like a hologram a two dimensional surface which encodes three dimensional information within so that is the holographic principle that's the analogy i can offer you i hope it makes sense so our universe could very well be a hologram and all the information within it could be possibly encoded in binary form or whatever form on a two dimensional surface that envelops it from the outside so that is the holographic principle it arises out of string theory right uh it was uh, gerard tooth who came up with this in, 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 initially then it was uh, leonard sus kind of worked on it and and other people as well so that's what it is do we know if it's true or not we don't know but from the string theory perspective it makes sense that's the simplest uh explanation i can offer now the last part of the question is are we following a pre-written script um see we all know the best theory of the origin of the universe is what we call what is colloquially called the big bang theory which says that all of the mass energy information everything of the universe was once compressed into a single point or something that was close enough to a single uh, zero dimensional point the initial singularity that eventually out of which space time expanded and that is what we call the big bang now if this is true then everything that happens in the universe can be uh, if you reverse time if you reverse the equations of time we can go back to the origin of the universe and again if we take the time clock forward then we can work everything back uh, forward in time which means that the entire universe all the mechan all the mechanics dynamics statics of all the objects molecules everything in the universe atoms subatomic particles photons everything follows differential equations and these are very complex differential equations but they are simply differential equations so they will work forward in time and backward in time if i mean it, it this is how it makes sense that's the best theory that we have and according to this theory there are certain un- uncertainties quantum uncertainties in the universe the heisenberg uncertainty, uncertainty principle says that the universe is is uncertain it's probabilistic it is not entirely deterministic and yet these are actual uncertainties these cannot be factored into the equations if you remove this randomness from the universe then everything else follows the differential equations all objects in the universe subatomic particles everything follows this differential equation they are governed their entire life cycle the the movement everything is determined and governed by these differential equations which means that free will doesn't exist what i am say, saying right now was determined at the um, at the moment of the big bang the very fact that i exist here was predetermined at the moment of the so called big bang and every single thing i speak and i do is predetermined per these differential equations that govern our existence which means the thoughts that i have the emotions that i have everything is predetermined determined so from that perspective there is no free will and everything is just uh, the universe is made up of clockwork there is this randomness the quantum randomness but that is you can say it's an external kind of thing uh, it is not something that can be pre- predicted so beyond the fact that we have quantum randomness everything else is predetermined 
and uh, the quantum deter- the quantum randomness does not affect our our will so so that's what it is it's a very scary thought i mean obviously we understand next to nothing of the universe our best theories are actually quite crude and rudimentary and primitive we understand less than 5% of the universe so we should not get carried away and start saying that we know everything and there is no free will but from the best theory that we have which is a very poor theory actually from that theory it appears that it would appear like free will is an illusion and everything is like predetermined but that may not quite be the case because we only understand a very little tiny bit of the universe and our uh, our understanding of the universe is far 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 from complete or correct uh, entirely so that's what i can offer you and i, ho- I hope that makes sense